Hi, in this video I'm going to go through part I of question 1 on the 2012 map paper. And in this question, uh, we have an equilateral triangle which has vertices that are labelled as x, y and z. And we have that the points x, y, z lie on a circle which has a circumference equaling 10. And they've called P the numerical value of the triangle's perimeter. So if our triangle was had side lengths 1, 1, 1, then P would be equal to 3. And similarly, A is the numerical value of the triangle's area. And they want to know which of these is true. So a question like this is a good idea to start off with a picture to see what is going on. So, so what we have is something like this. So we've got an equilateral triangle inside a circle, and this circle has to come from Okay, and we want to know about the perimeter and the area of this triangle. Now, it's a bit difficult right now because we don't know the lengths of any of these sides. So we're going to have to try and split this triangle up into a way such that we can figure out some lengths. Well, if we did this, uh, where this is the center of the circle, then we know that each of these lengths is just going to be r, right, where r is the radius. And we also know about, well, all of these angles, because this is an equilateral triangle, so we know that this angle here is going to be pi over 3, and then this angle here is just going to be half that, so it's going to be pi over 6. So we have a length and an angle, and well, if we want to know what the side lengths are, um, if we're trying to figure out lengths, right angle triangle is usually quite useful. So if we split this up into two right angle triangles, then we can work out the length of this edge, and then this edge of the equilateral triangle will just be twice that. So we want an edge that is adjacent to the angle, and we know the angle and the hypotenuse, so I suppose it's a good idea to try and use cos, because cos theta is the adjacent side of the hypotenuse, and so if I call this A, well then if I rearrange for A, because A is cos theta times the hypotenuse, and in our particular case, theta is pi over 6 and the hypotenuse is r, so this is what we get for A, and cos of pi over 6 is just root 3 over 2, so we have that our adjacent side A is just root 3 over 2 r, and so we know that the length of this entire edge is just going to be 2 times that, so this entire edge is just going to be root 3r. And for p, for the perimeter, we well, each of these sides have the same length, so it's just going to be 3 times 3r. So we've worked out p, and now we just need to find a. So yeah, it's probably a bit confusing using a here as well, but now I'm talking about A as in the area. So the area of a triangle is a half times the base times the height. And we have the base, but we don't know the height. Um, well, we know this bit is R, but we don't know this bit. So well, this is just the height of this right angle triangle. So I guess we can do something similar to what we just did to work out this length. So well, this is now the opposite edge. So let's use sine. Sine theta is the opposite edge of the hypotenuse. So in this particular case, uh, theta is pi over 6 and the hypotenuse is r. So for this height here, if we rearrange, then we get that it's going to be r times sine of pi over 6. And sine of pi over 6 is a half, so we have that this length is going to be a half r. Well, OK, so now we know the height is just going to be r plus a half r, so that's 3 over 2r. So our area is just going to be a half times the base is root 3r times the height is 3 over 2r. So our area is 3 root 3r squared over 4. OK, so I guess now we just need to work out what r is. Well, we know what the circumference is. And we know the circumference of a circle is 2 pi r. So if we rearrange this, we get that our radius is the circumference over 2 pi. And our circumference is 10. So it's 10 over 2 pi, which simplifies to 5 over pi. OK, so which of these is going to be true? Well, if r is 5 over pi, then p is 
3 root 3 times 5 over pi, which is 15 root 3 over pi. And when we square this, we're still going to have a pi squared in the denominator. And so that isn't rational. So we can't have that p squared is rational. So we get that d is out. OK, now what about these other three? Well, let's work out what a divided by p is, or p divided by a. And that will help us with these two. So if I do a divided by p, we're going to have 3 root 3 r squared over 4, all divided by 3 root 3 r. And so, of course, the 3 root 3s are going to cancel. And this r will cancel with one of the r's of the top. So we have that this is going to be equal to r over 4. And r is 5 over pi, right? So r over 4 is going to be 5 over 4 pi. And we see that that is the same as a. So we know that a is true.